Hello guys, so this is our vibrating string setup and uh, what it consists of is we have a string right here you can probably see it on the video and one end is tied to this little metal tongue on this electromagnetic oscillator so when I plug this in it's not plugged in right now, when I plug this in current goes through this little electromagnet and it uh, makes this little tongue vibrate up and down that's what's going to generate our wave, right, which is going to go down this end of the string. This end of the string we have over a pulley, and because the string is under tension, I've got some weight on this end of the string, this point right here acts as a fixed end. So when that first wave comes down and hits that fixed end, it's going to flip and go back and then it's going to reflect. So when I have that thing plugged in, I'm going to have, at all times, one wave going this way to your right, and another wave going that way to the left. And it's the superposition of those waves that we're interested in. Okay, now, one of the things that you're going to need is the density, the so-called linear density of this string. So in lab, what we would do is we would measure some length of string, put it on a scale, and then we would divide the mass by that length, and that would give us that density. So in your worksheet, you'll be given the mass and the length, and you can calculate the so-called linear density, which we symbolize with that Greek letter mu. So we have the density of the string. The other thing that we need is the length of this fixed piece of string. So we need the length from here to here. You'll be supplied with that length. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. The microphone might be picking up that vibration that you hear because it's vibrating. If I put my finger right here, whoo, I can feel it vibrating. I know you guys can't, but I can. Okay, and if you look right now, the tension that the string is under, which is determined by how much weight we have here, um, the tension is giving a certain speed right now for the two waves that are moving in opposite directions, but that speed is not at one of those special values where we would get what we would call a standing wave, where we would, we would get nice anti-nodes and uh, clear nodes forming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the weight right here, the mass that I put on the end of the string, which is going to vary the tension which is going to vary the speed of the wave until I hit one of those special speeds where I get the so-called standing wave pattern. And when that happens, we should see big anti-nodes, really big loops forming. Okay, so I'm going to start adding some mass on here. And let's see, I'm looking for, oh, I'm getting close. Let me put some more on. Some more on, oh, oh, I don't know if you can see that in the video. Yes, you can see that, okay? Right here, this is what I'm calling an anti-node. So the string, remember, is points on the string are vibrating up and down um, at 120 hertz, 120 cycles per second. That's the fixed frequency coming from my electromagnet. Again, that, that's a given piece of information that you'll have. But because we have a special speed, there are points where um, the antinodes, where you get the maximum up and down motion, where they are really nice and large. So we have really big antinodes. Points right here, like this point, that's called a node, that's where you're getting complete cancellation of the right going and left going wave and those points the string's not moving at all okay at, at all times so one of the things we have to do now is we need to count how many of these loops do we have okay so if I count my loops you may not be able to see all of the loops in the frame of the video but if I count my loops I'm gonna go ahead and count it for this mass one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight loops formed and seven nodes between those loops, okay? All right, so again, uh, 
on your worksheet, you'll be given, for instance, this mass that I have hanging on the end, and you'll be given the number of loops that were counted. Now, in lab, what you would do if you were here is you would change the mass until you get a different number of loops. Okay, so if I start taking some mass off, I can get a different standing wave pattern. Oh, I'm really close right there. I think I just ruined it. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, right about there. Okay, here's another standing wave pattern. Uh, well, I'm pretty close. Oh, I'm happier with that. See, I've got nice big anti-nodes again. Now if I count my loops, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got 11 loops with a different mass. Okay? So you'll be given a series of masses and number of loops. And then you'll be able to analyze that. And, uh, and you'll see with the analysis that you have to do on the worksheet and in the video that will be posted in Canvas. Okay, standing waves. Right? Beautiful. Okay, bye-bye.